Hey, how you all going? This is Ian Harris from Australia here, or AKA Ianapolis, your acrylic guru. Thanks for joining me in this video today. And if you saw the picture in the opening credits, well, we're gonna do a bit of a colorful thing like that today on at size canvas, all right? And I'll just pull aside like I normally do so you can grab a, um, eye on what colours we're going to use in this video today. Pretty basic colours, sky colours, water colours, earthy wood colours, alright. Now, I want to make this one a kind of a nice one, you know, like some of my, some of my paintings are a bit naffy, some of them are okay, so this one I want to make a nice one, alright. So, we better come down here, we've got the the palette, I always get canvas and palettes mixed up. Sometimes I say, come down to the canvas and we'll see, or I'll just get this onto the palette. So if you notice any little mistakes like that in my videos, just persevere with it and move on, all right? Because I do. All right, so we'll come down here to the palette and I will put my beginning colors on there. So we are going to start with the flow white look at that flowing white paint and some clear medium slow drying retarder this will slow down that drying process of that paint alrighty now we'll get my ah oh, someone's at my door just let me quickly get this on there just to the horizon line and I've got to go and answer my door someone's knocking at the door now my next color for the sky is phalo blue you can use your cobalt blue there's so many blues you can use I'm using my phalo blue because I think phalo blue is a sexy color so let's get this sky in I'm just, I might, I want it nice and pale on the horizon's edge there. So we'll just scratch that in there. My horizon's somewhere here. I want it nice and dark at the top. Here we go. And we'll bring it down. Now we're gonna pick up some more of that white just to get the horizon more pale. Well, I'd like the whole sky a lot more pale than what it is, you know. It's, I wanna keep them pale. This is gonna be a nice Hawaiian sky. Bit more down the bottom here. There we go, we've got that baby blue going on in the sky. All right, that's just about it for the sky. I can keep doing that until the cows come home, but I've got to learn to stop. Now, I want to put some beautiful clouds in here, and I'm going to start doing more of my two, two layer clouds with the, with the shadow and the white instead of just the white, okay? Because all my previous clouds have been just white. Now, if you can see the shine on that, that's wet. It's full of retarder. So it's full of all these things just want to merge together. So when we're putting paints on there, it's not dry like a normal, uh, what would you say, acrylic. It's, it's wet. It's staying wet. And I've got a window of a certain amount of time. I don't know exact, but there's a window there to get your bits and pieces in there. So I better shut up talking and get these clouds onto that sky, all right? Now I'm picking up just my small fan brush, something I can mix this paint up with, and we wanna mix up the blue, the white, and the red. I've got crimson red here, so that blue that I've dirtied up into the flowing white there. I can use that and I want to mix up that purple, okay? So let's get that 
shadow tone for the sky clouds there. Now is that too red? Not enough white? Just finding a very pale grey. Now see, normally I find I'll get the tone here. There we go. Now we've got that paint. Now leave that in the fan brush. And we're going to grab some good quality white paint for the clouds as well okay so we've got some nice titanium white and the actual brush that you want to put the paint on with for your clouds okay i might use a couple because some of these are going to be small so there we go now i'm going to start with this white titanium i'm picking it up i want some small clouds so i'm using a small brush and use any brush and my horizon lines here so i want some little clouds in the sky i'm stamping this on okay to get some little clouds probably there there now we're going to pick up some of the gray that we mixed and just dance some of that in there as well and obviously we need a blending brush, but we're going to need a smaller one. So I've got a small one here. And we want to dance that very lightly. And over here. Very... I'm just sort of tapping that. I'm, I'm barely rubbing into it. These are the small clouds but they need bottoms on them. And we've got that gray tone there. Now I'm picking up some more of the white paint and I wanna make some bigger cloud now. So somewhere there. I might use my fan brush now cause I don't like the way that little brush is putting it on. It's a bit, so I'll put the, the, the bigger cloud on there like that. We're grabbing our undercolored shadow color and we're sort of dancing that within there as well. And then we're going to blend it. Now I've got different size brushes to blend, so I want to sit that gray color into the cloud, blend the bottom of the cloud on, I blend it straight, something like that. And you can maybe tickle the tops. They're very soft clouds, but they're ones that are noticeable. So they're there in the sky. They're not big, vibrant, knock you in the face sort of clouds. Now we'll put some bigger ones on now. So we'll virtually get the, I'm looking for the top of the cloud formation, which is there. I'll come across there because it's an island. I'll come with my gray, not too much finding the bottom and stabbing it coming up into the body of cloud a bit just like that and we'll blend this the way I normally blend a cloud that's looking all right nice and fluffy Right, I've just got a few white dots there, so I'm going to get this brush on its edge and sort of see if I can blend them away, just like that. Right, we'll probably put a, uh, let's say we'll put a, something rather dominant here as well. So as I'm putting this on, I'm finding the top shape of my cloud with it, okay? That's what I'm doing, and I want it sort of bodied out about this long here. Now I've got something on my board there, I better get rid of that. Okay, and I'll give it a bit of a tail. Pick up the shadow colour. Bring, not right from the end, feed it into the body of the cloud a bit. Okay, and then we're going to blend that. Start from where the grey's meeting the whites dabbing it on 
everything's wet. You don't want to press too heavy. And then we can start shaping the bottom. Yeah, I'm liking that, that's beautiful. See, it's a clear day, so the top of some of these clouds are very, very white. So I've cleaned my fan brush and I'll just sort of very lightly we'll look in our clouds there and see where they're shy of some some light because the sun's way up ahead but these are obviously got some water in them ready to rain even if it doesn't they look nice because they've got the gray in them all right we've got our clouds in the sky i might just put some just just the littlest I don't know, um, just something over here. Just some little clouds just to break this part of the sky up. I'll get some paint on there. A little bit of grey underneath it. Yeah, it just looks a bit naked there, but there's virtually our sky. Our sky is done. Everything's finished, ready to dry. So I'm going to blow dry this now. Probably can't see this cloud, but at least I can see it. it's on there. I'll blow dry this. So as we can, I'm just going to sit some of those highlights down as well. Some of them are a bit too loud. Okay. Now I want to blow dry and put the mask and tape on for the horizon line and then we'll get the bottom part done, all right? It's that easy. <laughs> Before I dry it, right where my horizon line's going to be, I'm picking up that shadow colour from the clouds. I'm coming across the horizon line and I want to fade that into the blue as well because that's our distance in the sky there, which is a bit hazy and grey and, you know, those sort of colours you get out happening out there in your sky. Okay, I've just lightly blended that up into the blue. Because my horizon line's gonna be there, so it's gonna give that polluted look in the air over in the very vast distance. All right, I've dried all this. It's still tacky up there, but I've dried the area where I wanna put my masking tape. So we'll get our horizon line on. Which is about there. Now I want to say hello to my neighbour, Adam. He came over and thanked me for closing his tilt a door on his garage because he left it open the other day when he went to work and I wasn't sure if he was home or not so I rang him and he said if I can close it so I closed it for him and a gentleman as he is he went out of his way and to thank me he gave me a couple of scratchies now one of them has already won three dollars and one says try again and I haven't scratched the other half yet I'm too busy painting here but I just want to say thank you Adam all right Adam Swanky he's a Big buff Hawaiian, Samoan, Kiwi looking guy, eh? He's a huge fella. But anyway, it's good to have good neighbours. Now I'm gonna, I've masked that up like that. You can see what I've done. And I wanna get the watercolours in there and then we'll put the islands in, okay? So down here I have my turquoise and I've got some titanium white as well. So we will probably can put a bit of retarder in there so we get a nice blend through there and I want my water turquoise up here so let's get all this brushed in okay pick up some more now I want to wet it a bit because it's not guiding a gliding across the 
canvas the way I want it. There we go. So I want to get this water into about there. About there like that. Now I'm going to pick up some of the white with the turquoise. Just using my two inch brush. And I want to come into there and lighten it a bit. It's just so it's dark on the very edge. And then we'll pick up more white and bring more white turquoise out here like so. And then I want to blend that. It's nice and dark out the edge there. Yeah, today's a lovely day, but we're due to have some very wet nasty weather in the next couple of days so we've got it dark and light now I want to get more lighter here I have my yellow oxide I want to pull out here and get some flowing white paint I want this very white but a hint of yellow oxide in there for the foreshore of the water so we're gonna bring this up to the turquoise I want to get a bit more white in there and bring this sand really white at the top edge here. It's just very minimal. Get that in there. We'll blend that into the blue like this. Scratching it in just so we haven't got that sharp edge there anymore. Picking up some more white down the bottom. There we go, it's very minimal. Now I'll grab a blending brush and I want to really soften that transition of those two colours. So I'm grabbing my two inch blending brush and we're going to soften that where it's joining up. There we go, that's looking good. To finish the water off, I've got my small blending brush to tease the whitewash and a smaller fan brush, just something to apply it. Now I'm picking up my titanium white. So I want to start about here. I'm doing it in a long line, like so. Just like that. I'll do this bit at a time. And I want to tease this back into the water there just keeping the nice hard edge here against the sand keeping these strokes horizontal tease it into the water there how's that looking in the monitor that's looking good it's got some in this corner which is good we'll wipe that brush Pick up the, and we'll come across here. Pick up some more paint. Come across here. Put that down. Pick up your blending brush and tease this back into the ocean there. Leaving the hard edge. Just dancing it and teasing it. Like you're tiptoeing through the tulips. How's that looking? Yeah, that, see, that's looking like water just come onto the sand there. It's a bit of a hard brush mark there. And if you want, I'll put just a bit here. We could probably put just another layer. Maybe there, just like that. And see, we're going to dance that back into the water as well. Just like another 
break coming behind that first one. There we go, and this one here. And that's it, nothing too detailed. Don't get lost and carried away in it all. Now to sink that whitewash back, I've picked up a script liner. I've got it a bit wet and I've used that darker colour for the sand. I've added a little bit more yellow oxide just to give it a bit more of a darker tone or a shade. And we'll start out here and we just want to get the little shadows underneath this whitewash just to sink it onto the sand shore there okay it's very minimal but important I'm twisting this little script liner as I do it it's just stopping that water looking like it's floating It's like you're nervous and oh no I hope they don't find out I did something wrong you just got nervous hands there we go we just got that hint of a shadow on there <laughs> Just want to pull this tape off our horizon line and we'll put some distant islands out there now see that gray I put in the horizon the the pollution color you can see how it's working okay I've dried my canvas I've got my small little brush and I'm picking up some forest green I love forest green because it's a real looking color it looks real so I want to stamp this on come out there yeah that's the, that's the action I want out of my brush. Now out here we want some sort of island like an Hawaiian island so we'll get him sort of coming up there and maybe coming up out of the painting and then he's sitting on the water a bit. Now these aren't going to have pull down reflections like you normally do in a lake we go there's one out there we'll probably put a little one in the middle here find the bottom and keep it flat if you can And get him looking like an Hawaiian island. There we go. And we'll get something here. Now this one's going to be quite a larger one. And it'll, it'll come all the way here. Leaving a gap. So what I'm going to do. I'm going to start from the bottom. Keeping my bottom straight if I can. Dance him along. Oh, so much for keeping it straight, eh? And then we'll just bring him up like a big volcano island. But not a volcano, it's full of trees and stuff. Get some more paint and just start bombing it on. This is way up there. I'll fix that bottom up in a minute. finding the paint I'm gonna to have to, I'm wetting it adding a bit of water just so it'll transfer better there we go look at that I 
and let's see if we can fix that bottom up a bit. Now I've lightened that green with the smallest of white and I want to come across here. I want to leave a dark band under here because it's sort of a protruding island. It's not lined with the sand on it. And we can sort of give this some highlighting looks about it. Same with this one, leaving the bottom, just highlight some of it. I'll just get rid of that dark bit on the top there because the sun's shining down. But I want to keep that bit between the water dark and out here. So we'll just sort of, let's say, Get them more dark and light, and there we go. They're just distant islands. Now I've cleaned that brush, and I'm picking up some yellow green out of the tube. I better wipe the water off it. I don't want it too wet. I might just kill it a bit with a bit of the forest green, just so it's not too loud. Just the litmus bit. There we go, that's what I'm after. And we'll give this some overhanging type of dimension here and there into that darker colour. There we go. And the same, just the litmus bit on here. Because that's a smaller one. That's it. And over here. Now I haven't dried it, so I'm hoping it might bleed with it a bit just to keep the loudness off it. How's that looking? Yeah, that's getting what I'm... Now, can you see how I've wanted that darkness under there? That's the sort of islands they are. I want to bring this... scooting down in front of that other ridge there. Because this is going to have a palm tree in front of it anyway. There, they're looking like islands. Now, just to sit those islands down, I have a very fine soft haired fan brush and I've moistened up some of the white, the titanium white and I just want to lightly put some water breaking. See how tiny that is? Let me just see on the monitor. It's very tiny, very 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 tiny. Just breaking up against the dark bit on the island there. We can probably have some on the horizon line as well. Now, I'm just looking in the monitor. They look very loud. So I've washed all that water off that brush. Okay. And I want to see what I'm doing. I'm just getting rid of those loud bits. I'm just scratching it down. Done it there. And I'll do it here as well. Get rid of that bit, it needs a bit loud. Do this big one. Wipe all that paint off there, and I just want to whoosh them down a bit. 
get this brush and sit them down because there's just turbulent water against that island's edge that kind of sits it down. There we go. Okay, I've mucked around with the water as much as I can. Now we're just going to put a palm tree coming from our direction out and that'll pretty much do it. So we're going to need a flathead brush for that. On the palette I have my raw, I have my raw sienna and my raw umber and I've mixed the raw umber in the white and I want my, let's say, you can come from about here and he's going to come right out about there. This will be the trunk of our palm tree. All right. Now I'm grabbing the raw umber to get some darker values in that trunk. I want to get the trunk done first just so as we can um, concentrate on all the foliage up top. So we're putting those distinct rings and stuff that they have in them. Just give it a sort of a round shape. There we go, something like that. Now I've cleaned that brush and I've picked up some raw sienna dark, which will bleed into all that now, leaving some of those dark bands there. Just so we've got some sort of detailed trunk here. And if it's too much, the first colour we put on there, we can use to sit them back down, okay? So we'll get the darker bit back up here, get some of that, just scratch it over them now in a, in a round fashion. And we've sort of got all our palm features on the trunk, so to speak. Some darks and lights. Now I want to grab the darkest raw umber and just get this bit here stabbed in a bit darker like so now I'm going to use a flathead brush for the palm leaves so I'm getting my forest green the darkest of the two and I'm going to chisel it on there and we're going to put our trunks not our trunks our branches so we sort of come up let them Go like that. There's one simple one, okay? I've dampened that brush just a little bit so our paint's gonna transfer. Let's get another one, say, here. Just like that, all right? And then we'll give these some highlights as well. This is the bulk of this colour now. So what I'm trying to do is just put some extra sharp bits on the ends of them here like so. i have got to fix up this. You can have something up there. And then just make the inside here, don't kill that big brown bit, just make them sort of busy. See what? Okay, just so it's not so Ethiopian looking in the middle there. That's it. Now I've picked up the yellow green, I've washed the same brush out, and I want to give, let's say, this. A bit of a branch up there. We're going to try and highlight some of these. Let's not do it too much. Say a bit there. How 
How's that looking? Yeah, that's looking sort of. Palm tree lookish, isn't it? Just got to be careful not to destroy too much of our background. Just lay it on with some brush strokes. So the, the first green we put on was like adding the, the depth for them all. So we're leaving a lot of that darker green on. We'll come over that island a bit just so we can sit it back. I'm just doing willy nilly brush strokes here, hairy brush strokes. All right, I'm just finishing it off with some these yellow oxide with some white. The bits in the middle are pretty much got woody colours on them, you know? So that's what all this is just doing. Okay, I've just washed that brush and because these are loud, I'm just going to like tone them back a bit how's that looking in the monitor yeah that's all right and I just want to darken up that center now so I'll just grab some of the raw umber the darker color and blob some of that back in there there we go now just to sit some of the front ones back no, to sit some of the back ones in front of the front ones, I'm just getting some yellow, just a very, what's that looking like? Yeah, just, just the very littlest of yellow here and there, just where light's mainly in front of that island there. How's that looking? And some of this. Got yellow flicking through it. I mean, I'm not the best at palm trees, but my golly, this will be all right. It's not too shabby. Get that in front of there. I'm sort of sitting in front of that island behind, so it makes that darker island stand out. But that's it. I'll just put my autograph on here. Very small I don't want it too big killing it and we'll put Steve's footprint there as well let's pull this tape off and put a frame on it and we'll see how she looks they always look good with a frame I reckon but if you don't have a frame the second best option is this white border you can create around painting Put a frame on that. There we go, that's not too shabby. Hey, we've got a beautiful tropical sky and some water, some soft light colored sand, a palm coming out into the um, picture there and some beautiful clouds. That's not too shabby, eh? I hope you've enjoyed this little painting tutorial and, oh, this isn't even my painting. What are, you, what are you doing, Reese? This is, this is my outro, I'm just trying to get things ready. Sorry about that little mix-up. All right, hope you've enjoyed this little exercise for you beginners out there. It's a simple, it's, it's easy and it isn't. It's one where you need to watch and understand what you're gonna do in the painting, okay? All right, so if you like what I've done here, you tell your friends, but if you don't, you better tell everybody, all right? Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.